there's no reason why 120 needs to be the maximum human lifespan. There is nothing in biology that says that there is a limit. And there are many species that live a lot longer than us. Is there anything that you've seen that says that there's a physical limit on like that we have to actually die? Like, can we ultimately live to 200, 250? Well, of course we can. There is no law that says we have to age. Uh, right now, there's a limit because that's what we've seen happens. But the people that live over 100 typically don't take care of themselves. Uh, a lot of them smoke and, and some of them you know, smoke and drink and don't eat good food. So what happens when you have great genes, which is 20 percent, plus people who do the optimal lifestyle and take the optimal supplements and take the optimal drugs? There's no reason why 120 needs to be the maximum human lifespan. There is nothing in biology that says that there is a limit. And there are many species that live a lot longer than us, not just trees that live that thousands of years, but warm blooded mammals take the bowhead whale that can live over 200 years. That's very similar to us. Our genes are almost identical compared to, you know, a banana and a yeast cell. These are living, breathing mammals with, you know, milk and they're, they're conscious beings and they live two centuries or more. Why, why can't we? We just need to learn how they do it. And I think it's all about slowing down these scratches, slowing down that clock. And we know that by looking at whales and other species that live a long time, the ticking of that clock goes very slowly. Now they, they don't, you know, they don't have supplements. They don't have to do the kind of things that we do. We're trying to hack our bodies right now to give us some of the benefits that whales naturally have. Do you think like that we, you will see a person live to 150 today? Oh gosh. Uh, I think the odds are against me. Um, but I do think that somebody born today will live that long because the technology is just going so quickly. And remember, they're going to live into the 22nd century. Who knows what that's going to be like? We can only imagine. Um, I would like to. Um, I, I'm not in any rush to leave this planet. I'm having a lot of fun, and I think I'm helping people, doing my best at least. Um, but, you know, realistically, and nobody's asked me that question, Shane, but honestly, I think the chances of me making it beyond 150 are slim. Um, I was born probably one generation too early, but our kids and their kids are going to reap these benefits that we're talking about now. When you think about it, what's your expectation of your age realistically? Well, you know, I haven't set a goal. I, I, you must have one though. No, nah, I don't. I, I mean, I'm not worried about my own death. I mean, I, I, I'm not a fan of being a burden on my kids or suffering, but I really don't mind. If I die tomorrow, I'm, I'm not going to cry about it, obviously. But um, I live my life like every day is a blessing and I'm happy to have every day. Now, if you forced me to give you a number, I'd, I'd love to live beyond 100. I wouldn't say no to 120, and I wouldn't say no to 150. And I wouldn't say no to 1,000 years. 1,000 years isn't that much, actually, geologically speaking. I'm 50 years old now. That's just 20 times my lifetime. 50 years went by in a blink of an eye. So what's 20 blinks? Not that much. So I, I would love to live centuries. I don't think it's likely. Uh, I think eventually people will. Um, but, you know, I'm a fairly, um, let's say, I, I have high levels of the FU gene. Um, and I do like to show the naysayers uh, to be wrong. And I would love to be able to live to 130 just so I could say, hey, remember when you said it was impossible? Told you. And that, you know, that, that, that's my rebellious gene in me. But, you know, that's not why I do this, obviously. Um Although I do, I do joke that, you know, I've had plenty of naysayers and enemies over the years and I do like to joke and it, it's serious. It, it's, it's actually a joke. I don't believe this, but it is fun to, to think about that uh, one way of uh, getting ahead of your enemies and the naysayers is to outlive them. And uh, there is a little bit of truth to that, that, that science, science progresses one funeral at a time. And as, the old guard is dying off. We're seeing more rapid progress in the way scientists and doctors think about what we can do for patients. Well, that's an interesting implication of if we all start living longer too, because we, then we start to hold on to old theories a bit longer. And uh, have you thought much about the implications of living longer and like what that means for society and housing and money and fiscal policy and politics? And yeah, well, lots, you know, 
I'm working on a whole bunch of things that I, I think are necessary for the world to exist with people living 120 and beyond. Uh, housing, shelter, shelter, food. I work on preserving food right now. I have a patent that I just wrote on that. But um, yeah, it's important. I think about it a lot. And we need to have less impact on the planet. I think that technology can solve anything we want. Uh, we just need to put our minds to it. And, uh, and that includes being the, being able to grow food that isn't wasting water, using up too much land, degrading the soil. We can do this. We have the knowledge. It's just a matter of investment and willpower and incentives and capitalism being, you know, conducive to, to making that happen. But yeah, we, we waste a lot. Half of the food in the US, by the way, is thrown out. So yeah. to say that we have a food shortage is, is, is ignorant of that fact. But what we want to do is to produce food and not throw it away. And that's one of the reasons I've focused recently on shelf life of, of vegetables. But that that's just one small part of a whole load of things that needs to happen. One thing that always comes up from a crowd that I would talk to about this is, what about overpopulation? And if you do the math, it turns out that even with slowing down aging and making us live to 120, we're not going to overpopulate. We're going to level out at about 10 billion people. Uh, whether we live longer or not, the big impact is reducing fertility or fertility rates, birth rates. And that's plummeting across the planet, particularly in the developed, uh, developing world. And already in the developed world where you and I, Shane, live, um, US, for example, replacement rates of children are now negative without immigration. That's true for Europe. Uh, it's true for Australia, uh, Japan, really bad for that. Uh, bad in, for the economy, that is. And China increasingly worried about replacing their population. So staying alive for longer in a productive way, not an unproductive, unhealthy way, but productive people who have wisdom, who have knowledge, and who can impart that wisdom and be leaders of the community rather than burdens on the community. That's a massive change that we will see probably in our lifetimes of people being you know, centenarians and still running companies that will come back in trillions of dollars in benefits to the economy and just the US economy alone.